Hello everybody. Just to let you know that our brand new Christmas song, Pantomime, is available right now. You can download it from Amazon Music or Google Play. You can stream it from Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, YouTube Music, wherever you get your music. And don't forget, all the proceeds we receive from downloads and streams is going to a wonderful charity, Dementia UK. So get downloading, get streaming, enjoy this video. We'll see you soon. Hello once again. And once again, hello from me. Now, we couldn't let these videos pass without talking about a place in the UK that Simmons and Simmons worked in in so many pantomimes, we became synonymous with it. That's right, Derby. <laughs> Derby, of course. Yeah. Is, it, is it Derby? For five years, we wrote, directed and performed in the pantomime at the assembly rooms in Derby. We did. Then the following year, we just wrote the script for the venue. Yeah. Two years after that, we directed it and wrote the script. Yeah. And then the year after that, we had a different venue still in Derby and we still wrote the script. That's right. So nine years we were involved in consecutive years with the pantomime in Derby. That's right. Yeah. Our first year was there with, with Peter w Pan. Peter Pan with the great Gary Wilmot, who played Captain Hook. He was an excellent Captain Hook, I he have really to say. Was. One of my earliest memories of Derby Panto was all turning up, meeting the new company. It was wonderful. And um, <laughs> the first ever lunch, we went out into the main square in Derby, just by, oh, by the Assembly Rooms Theatre, yeah. and we found this cafe. I won't name it, but it was a decent cafe. But Gary Wilmot went in there with a few of the other company members, and he got <laughs> he got bothered by so many well wishers, admirers, and fans, and people wanting autographs while he was trying to eat his lunch. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. never went in there again no. for the rest of the season. And really, I was really disappointed because I should never have asked him for his autograph. <laughs> yeah. to be honest. And but, one of the one of the boy dancers, Lee. Lee Thompson. From Liverpool, yeah, yes. he became a great mate, didn't he? He was synonymous with Derby for quite a few years as well. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was a right. great guy, quite a bit of an outrageous character, but uh, hilarious <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, also, that first year in Derby, we worked with Lee Brennan oh, from 911. Of course, yeah. Who we went on to work with again in Chesterfield seven years later. That's right, yeah. Um, and he was an excellent Peter Pan. We shared a dressing room, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of laughs. Yeah, we certainly did. And uh, Mina Anwar was in that um comedian and uh, but i remember fondly doing the awkward squad routine mm. and it was with you mina gary and me <laughs> and normally you'd expect captain hook to be the sort of serious one leading it but so gary could muck about as captain hook i had to be the one leading it yes that's right but it all worked well Indeed. i enjoyed that yeah, yeah. So well, we got asked back the next year yeah uh, to do jack and the beanstalk mm. which we did touch on briefly with uh, jeff holland uh, a few episodes back yes and um, yeah, that was with Lisa Scott Lee from Steps, Johnny Shentel, Jeff Holland, his wife Judy Buxton was in yeah, it, Greg yeah. Haste was the comedy character, yeah. and Antonio Fargus was uh, Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear was Flesh Crew. Yeah, that's right. And then the third year we were there, 2008 into 2009, was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yeah. And that was with Seven Real Dwarves. Yeah, great characters. They were fantastic. Them. And of course, we had the great Sue Holderness, yeah, yeah. Marlene from uh, Only Fools and Horses, and Sylvester McCoy, Doctor uh, Who of Doctor Who fame, who's since yeah. been in The Hobbit as well. As yeah, main character. I had worked with Sylvester before back in at the Manchester Palace with Paul Nicholas in oh, Aladdin yeah, yeah. many years before, but this time it was you and I working with uh, Sylvester, and we shared a dressing room with him, didn't we? We did, yeah, yeah, yeah that so. was good as well. The prince that year in Snow White was called Tom Solomon. Yeah. And I think he'd previously pulled out of a pantomime with PHA because another unbelievable story, he arm wrestled with the drummer for a bit yes. of a laugh yeah. and broke his arm. Yes, arm right. wrestling. Yeah. Ever since I heard that story, I've never wanted to arm wrestle anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Okay. <laughs> you don't want any shatterings yeah, live on. Terrible, that, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. awful. Had Snow White was played by Laura Sicurello, who'd been in How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria. She got to the final ten of that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was a, another great show. Again. Certainly was, yeah. And then we came to our our last two pantomimes at Derby that we appeared in, yeah, which were special for having the same top of the bill both years. And I think the first year this man was top of the bill, it broke the box office records. Mm, and I, I'd never seen so many people 
go up to someone in the street just to be pleased to meet them. Yeah. And that man was Neil Morrissey of Men Behaving Badly fame. And Bob the Builder fame as well. Yeah, he had a Christmas number one with Bob the Builder. He did. Because amazingly, Neil Morrissey, who is not with us at the moment, he's filming in Ireland, Yeah. but said he would join us on the phone. So in a couple of minutes, we will try and make a call to Neil Morrissey. Mm. What do you remember about that first year with him? It was Cinderella, wasn't it? That's right. He yeah. was playing Buttons. He was Buttons. We were, you were Baron Hardup, I was the broker's man, yeah. chasing you around for money. Yeah, and uh, Kelly Bryan from the... The g band Eternal, yeah. The girl band Eternal, yeah, she was our Cinderella. Yeah, she was very lovely. Yeah, and our... And we had ugly sisters, Mark Two and Jamie Steen, mm. who were quite outrageous. <laughs> yeah, yes. But no, it's, uh, that was another good season, that one. Yeah, absolutely. And then... That second year with Neil Morrissey topping the bill in Derby, 2011, um, was Aladdin, wasn't yeah. it? He played Wishy Washy. And I've got to say, probably, that's one of the closest knit companies we've ever worked with. Yeah. And we all used to meet up sort of every few months afterwards just to see how each other were getting on. And there would be huge groups of not just one or two people meeting up, it would be like 10, 11 people meeting yeah. up. Yeah, that's right. And uh, that year, we were the Chinese policemen. Mm. Luke Roberts was Aladdin. Yeah. Excellent Aladdin. Uh, Vicky Hoyles was Princess Jasmine. Yeah. We had uh, Gareth Davis was um, Abenaza. Abenaza, great Abenaza. Yeah. And we had Ian Good as Dave. Yeah, oh, another great guy. Yeah, we see yeah, him quite yeah. a bit. Actually, Widow yeah. Twanky, yeah. yeah, he was a great guy. Great and guy. then we stayed great mates with the MD. It was MD at Derby for many years as well, called Phil Sheet. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, he was uh, a great guy as well. We had the genie, was Tyler Fayosin, mm -hmm. who's now gone into photography. So if you want headshots done, <laughs> get yeah. in touch with Tyler. Yeah, yeah. another great season that. And I think it did, it did that, that broke box office records as well. Yeah, think, yeah, didn't yeah. It? So yeah. hugely successful. Something you can't go through this video without mentioning is some of the people behind the scenes sort of synonymous with Derby pantomimes. We had a wonderful company manager there for many years called Simon Gangloff, yeah. who was a, a real character and a great guy. Yeah. yeah. And then Karen Owen in the wardrobe. Ah, one of the one of the best wardrobe uh, departments we've worked with, really. Yeah, Karen kept amazing. it all really under control. And Ken, her husband, worked backstage some years there yeah. as well, didn't he? So, yeah. But Karen was fantastic. Yeah. And I remember um, one of the male ensemble for many years there was a great mate of ours called Adam Jenkins, who we worked with in Cromer as well. Mm. But Adam Jenkins had this relationship with Karen in wardrobe and would just be hilarious. And whenever he needed anything with his costume, he'd just go, wardrobe! <laughs> And instead of calling her Karen, would just call her wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> She's the sort of person that probably would have slapped him around the head if he was getting on her nerves, but she took it quite well. Uh, well, who could forget Dick, the stage doorkeeper, brilliant at the assembly room starving, yeah. Dick Barton. Yeah, yeah, excellent. What a fantastic guy he was. <laughs> and I'll never forget walking through the car park and he'd come out to meet you and he'd say, all right, friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, we can't talk about Derby Pantos without talking about Gizzard. <laughs> a wonderful musician in his own right, Nick Pinchbeck, he's um, MD'd other shows. Um, yeah. But when he started in Derby, he was on the bass guitar, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, one day he wore a G Star Raw branded jumper which had on it G-S-R-D mm. in big white letters. And from that moment on, he became known to everyone as Gizzard. <laughs> and it went so far as Neil Morrissey wearing his Gizzard jumper in an end-of-season video because we nicked it out of his digs because we were all in the same digs. Yeah. Now, we mentioned this could be possible a little while ago, and I'm very excited to say... The man we worked with, who topped the bill for two years at the assembly rooms in Derby. Is Much on, against his better judgment. It's on the end of his phone. It's Neil Morrissey. Neil. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm very well. Great. Yeah, I'm very well. Great. And you're coming to us live from Ireland at the moment, are you? That's right. I'm filming out in Ireland a, a really cheery script. It's so dark. It's all full of sex and murder. Fantastic. So, so no change. It's rather similar. It's rather similar. 
friend Darby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, true. So yeah. Um, we're looking back. I mean, we did five years consecutively in Derby, but the last two of those were with you as top of the bill. Do you have any particular memories that stand out when you look back well, on... I, I, I remember when, um, having said yes to the gig as well, <laughs> yeah. I remember then someone saying to me, you, you only gave nine minutes, yeah. and then two of those days are off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and immediately I thought, oh my God, you know, yeah. you know, how, how, does, how the hell is this going to work? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So I remember thinking, well, I've got enough to do yeah. with the kind of opening speeches which we were going to work on about what gags we're going to do in the opening bit when Buttons, yeah. who I was first year round, yeah. comes out and starts having a chat. Yeah. And then I remember sitting there, you two boys were there as well, and the, the MD saying, and so then, well, let's just run through what's going to happen to the show and who's singing what numbers. <laughs> and then it came to me, and they said, and Neil, you'll be singing now. I went, no, give it to the prince. <laughs> It was quite an intensive rehearsal period, I think that's fair to say, definitely. Yeah, it really was. Uh, <laughs> but it was amazing that um, everybody else who um, was, you know, with the wonderful dancers and the other guys who played the characters yeah. in the panto just thought that was perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, it is, isn't it? Well, it, it is, it, yeah. It's certainly... With a lot of production companies these days, it's all really intensive. Get it on in about 10, 11 days if possible, sometimes less. Yeah. Because it was three times a day. There was one at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then um, mm. like one at about two, which yeah. would have been, um, you know, normal people doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the 7.30 or whatever it was. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's yeah. right. I mean, it was the most exhausting thing yeah. I've ever done. You know, I didn't enjoy it. And I'm... And that's the thing is, I do remember all just only the good bits. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And, and remember my beloved Emma, she was with me as well all yeah, the time. Yeah, of course, yeah. And she said, she did say, you know, you're tired, but you're having fun, Neil, you know. Yeah. You're having fun. Yeah. We, we remember as well, I think she's sadly no longer with you, but you had a wonderful dog called Tiggy, who spent a lot Correct. of time with you. Yeah, she... She, she went two years ago. Oh. Two years ago, Christmas actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, everyone loved her. Everyone in the production thought she was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, everyone would take turns looking after her because if Em was out, yeah, and I brought the dog with me, yeah. everyone would take turns looking after her in the dressing room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 fantastic. But I mean, you so you played that iconic character Buttons that first year, and then yeah. the second year, another iconic character. You were wishy washy in Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah. Wishy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My one regret is not taking that costume home. To <laughs> there was a lovely guy who was playing. I can't remember what the character was, but he honestly, before I was sure, did about an hour and a half of makeup. Oh yeah, he was. Know. That was Pag Paul Arden Griffith was the Emperor of China, and he used to uh, put yeah. masking tape over his eyes to give himself a more Chinese appearance. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, it was yeah. actually. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, Exactly, you know, he was, he was our method actor. He was very much the yeah. Dan Day-Lewis of the pants. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he's opened a takeaway now, so it's quite <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I remember doing a scene with you in that production of Aladdin because we were the Chinese policemen and it was yeah. you managing to prove that we didn't work at all in a year or something because I remember this whole mathematical thing you had to remember where we ended up not oh. working at all. Yeah, that is an old pantomime routine, but... Uh... I know. Say that, but I would need three weeks to learn. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, 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 I remember being confused when I first heard it. Um... <laughs> I, I actually always wanted to ask you because I have mentioned in our earlier filming that mm. of all the people we've worked with, I don't think I've ever worked with the top of the bill who got approached by so many people just walking around the town and well wishers and stuff who just wanted to say hello and they were pleased to meet you. I mean, that must be fantastic, but there, I guess there's a time then where you wish you could just kind of get away from it a bit. <laughs> no, it's always a compliment when people approach you yeah. um, when you're out on 
the street, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, there was, all, there, was, there was quite a lot of shows at the time on television, etc. Sure, yeah. And, and, you know, it was... Um, it's always a pleasure when you when you, when people approach you, especially when they're bringing their children to you. You know, yeah, and yeah, I do sure. love Derby. You know, I, I love that town and I love the market opposite where the theatre was. Yeah, too. a lot of us used to go in there and buy our bats, didn't we? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean that in a non hashtag me too way. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> Um, stuck in the snow one time as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and our lovely stage manager went on for me. He was yeah. About four foot ten. The assistant <laughs> stage wear, manager. Wear my <laughs> His name was Adam Dakin. I think he was terrified. I think you you arrived about forty minutes into the show, and because yeah, I, because I it... just before they could cut my wages. <laughs> <laughs> Stage. Um, he, he exited. Yeah. And the next time, and we did a, a real quick costume change in the wings. I was in my pants already, <laughs> and, and got my cosy off him. And the next time, I walked on and said, "I'm here." <laughs> Brilliant. What I remember though, in your opening, you used to do gags about men behaving badly and Bob the Builder. Because he was the understudy, he still had to do them, but they didn't make any sense for him. <laughs> <laughs> People, yeah, yeah. And, and do that. Yeah, that to me, that's, yeah. The, that's the spirit of this business, isn't it? Particularly pantomime. Yeah, what, what was is. great about that, and what you did as well, which is a lovely gesture, was in the finale, you let him come down with you in the walk down and get his own bow as well, which was fantastic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember that. God, I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> we've also we you just mentioned it by the way of course you had a christmas hit with bob the builder back in when was that 2000 about the year yeah, 2000 a trivia question i was number one for about 14 weeks yeah. in the year 2000 with, brilliant uh, with the bob the builder hit now had... when i knocked i knocked eminem off the top of the charts and prevented <laughs> westlife from breaking a beatles record and got an ivan novello that was a proper <laughs> Oh, what wow, a fan. That is brilliant. I didn't know all that. That is brilliant. Well, listen, Neil, it's been brilliant reminiscing with you about our time in Derby, and thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate you, it. And it's a great way to mark. Is it 50 years, Keith? 50 pantomimes, yeah. I've been in the business 52 years. I only missed wow. two years of pantos, yeah. But listen, <laughs> when you get back, before you're off on any other trips, perhaps we could get together sometime in town and have a coffee together and a, another great chat. It won't be <laughs> no, of course. Of I, course. Irish coffee. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. At least. Yeah, Irish coffee. All right. so hopefully, we can get it together and get something together. Yeah, brilliant. Soon. Okay. Or you can all just because you you know you spend a lot of time in Crow, we can swim over to France. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Your way down. Yeah, yeah right. In France. Yeah. Down there. Yeah, Fantastic. we'd love to do that. Yeah. Right. Well, Listen, take care, mate, and great to speak to you. you. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, mate. We'll see you soon. Bless you both. And you. Uh, Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers now. Bye. So that was the great Neil Morrison. Yeah. Fantastic to speak to him and good of him to take time out of his schedule filming in Ireland um, yeah. to be in one of these. Yes. Every pantomime season that I have done has always been great memories. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And yeah. it's lovely to share those memories with people, which is the whole point of doing these. We hope you're enjoying watching them. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, join us again for more of these videos very soon. See you soon. Cheers. Bye. Dreams come true and cup its in the land of pantomime.